What's up everybody, Cliff here from The Sunday Drive and in today's video we're gonna go through 16 more common issues that you might experience with your 14 through 18 Silverado, Sierra or other GM truck. So a few weeks ago, we published 12 common issues that you might experience with your 14 through 18 Silverado, Sierra, Tahoe, uh, whatever GM truck you might have from this generation. And we asked you guys to comment what issues you had had that we hadn't covered. And you guys definitely delivered over a thousand comments to that video and counting, so thank you so much. We went through all of those comments. I did my best to respond to everybody. My apologies if I didn't. Um, but we went through all the comments and we're gonna cover 16 additional issues in today's video. Now you guys responded with more than 16 issues. There were four or five, four or five other ones that I saw, um, but they didn't seem to be super common. So I'm gonna put those down in the description as a little bonus if you wanna go check that out. But let's get to the 16 issues that you guys identified for the 14 through 18 model year Silverado and Sierra. Um, a few of these issues I actually experienced and forgot to include in the first video, and you guys called those out, so thank you for doing that. But without any further ado, let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna start under the hood. And the first issue is one that I personally experienced with the truck, and we have a full video on it. So if you have this problem, we have a video to help you out. And that is the high pressure fuel pump. So I had engine codes or uh, check engine lights for P0172 and P0175. Um, and I first noticed this being a problem where the truck was idling weird and when I would turn the ignition off it would uh, shut down in a very strange way. I believe I covered those symptoms in that video. It happened a while ago now so I don't remember them exactly but I do remember when I would turn the truck off it wouldn't shut off right away like a normal turn off. I started doing some investigation of the codes and identified that it was the high pressure fuel pump. Um, I took it to a local dealer um, to have them verify that that was the issue and they did a line pressure test on the fuel pump or some type of pressure test and they did verify that it wasn't holding the proper pressure. So another way to identify this is if you pull your dipstick, it'll smell like gasoline and this is because the internal seals in the high pressure fuel pump go um, and that's why you're having a loss of fuel pressure and that excess pressure is pushing fuel into the engine itself and it's degrading your oil. So anytime you mix oil and gas, because a lot of times you're cleaning up parts, you can use gasoline to clean oily things. Um, it's going to make it so that the oil is not coating the parts. It could wear out the bearings in your engine. So if you have this symptom, change um, your oil as soon as possible and uh, change the high pressure fuel pump as soon as possible. But if you can't change the high pressure fuel pump, definitely change your oil frequently until you can because you don't wanna have your oil getting degraded and not lubricating the parts properly. The oil pump is all the way back there. Um, little bit of a pain to get to, but it's not really a bad job at all once you get this cover that I don't have reinstalled right now over the air intake manifold. That's a bit of a pain to get off and we talk about that in the video. Um, while we're talking about the high pressure fuel pump, I'll go into one of the other issues now. I don't really view this as specifically a Silverado problem, but a lot of you guys did comment on it, so I figured I would add it in here, and that is direct injection corroding up your valve. So any DI motor or direct injection motor doesn't have fuel getting sprayed directly onto the valve stems. Um, so over time, they're gonna get carbon buildup and gunk up and not perform optimally. And if you get enough buildup on there, you can actually have uh, performance issues. So a way to mitigate that is installing a catch can. This will help capture that oil so you don't get as much oil on the valves causing that carbon buildup. Now the way I have this set up, it will not capture things in wide open throttle. You can get a catch can that has a second input um, where you can get that captured when you have wide open throttle, but I don't drive this truck like a race car, so I'm not under wide open throttle that often. So this does just fine by me and it works really well. Highly recommend it. This one's an elite engineering one. Again, we have a video showing how to install it, um, but there's some other good ones on the market as well. But that is definitely something I recommend on any DI engine is installing a catch can to help prevent that carbon buildup. You'll have to ignore my dirty appearance. We're in the process of doing a turbo swap on a 435 um, and uh, yeah, I have coolant all over me. Um, but getting into the next issue on the truck, it is not about coolant. Um, in the last video, we did cover the AC condenser failure. However, what I didn't know is that the AC compressors on these trucks tend to be pretty unreliable. I think there were about four or five people that commented that their AC compressor went um, well before 100,000 miles. So the AC compressor might be something to watch out for on this. So if your AC goes out, don't just assume it's the AC condenser, although it probably is. There's also a good chance the condenser may have, or the compressor itself may have went out. So that's something else to keep an eye out for. 
Um, another issue that I did experience with the truck is leaking cooling lines. So underneath the truck, there are some transmission and oil cooling lines that run up to some radiators. Um, those tend to leak. And this is an issue I had very early on with the truck. I was under warranty, so I don't even think we had the YouTube channel at the time. This was very early on. We had just maybe just started it. But since it was under warranty, I just took it to the dealer and they did replace that. It's a very common issue. Um, but if you do see a leak there and you're out of warranty, you probably have to replace those lines. So I'm not sure the exact cause, if it's the lines or the seals or the gaskets, but it is a common issue. A lot of guys commented about those leaking cooling lines running up to the front of the truck. Next issue, are exhaust manifold bolts breaking? Now I no longer have the exhaust manifold bolts on my truck. I upgraded to ARP studs and nuts, as you can see right here. Definitely recommend either going with ARP bolts or studs because of this issue. Apparently, a lot of trucks have been going back in to the dealers with broken exhaust manifold bolts. Now, I assumed that when the guy first commented, uh, it was regarding guys upgrading their headers or heads or doing some type of work to the truck. Um, however, he said he's replaced this on about 40 trucks and it's not guys just doing upgrades. They're just breaking off and then they'll have loud ticks and noises because you now have an exhaust leak. So um, if yours aren't broken, I don't necessarily recommend touching them because they probably will break when you go to remove them. However, you, if you do start hearing a lot of loud noises from the engine, check your exhaust manifolds because possibly one of those has broken and now you have a leak. If you're in there working on it, I definitely recommend going with aftermarket ARP hardware. Um, that's gonna hold up a lot better than bolts. I definitely like going with studs. It does make it a little bit harder to fit the um, intake uh, or the exhaust manifolds on. You have to actually put the manifold, then screw in the, the studs and then add the nut because there isn't enough room uh, to get it on there with the steering linkage and other things that you have to work around if you have the studs on already. However, you don't have to worry about a bolt snapping off. You're just removing a nut and then you have a nice easy and hopefully loose stud to take off. Um, so definitely recommend changing those out if you haven't already but don't touch it if it's not broken because you might break a bolt off and that's gonna be a pain to extract. Now this next issue specifically uh, focuses on the 2014 through 2016 Silverados and Sierras um, and it is the radiator and GM actually released a TSB on this. It's uh, PI1513F um, and we'll have a link to any of the articles that we reference in this video down in the description. Um, but if you have a 17 or newer truck, I believe this issue has been fixed. I've actually never had this problem with my truck, but I also did buy it used with 19,000 miles on it. So it may have been fixed prior to my ownership. Um, but uh, many of you guys reported this issue. Um, and just reading here, this condition may be the result of excessive uh, thermocycles within the cooling system. This is from the TSB itself, I believe. Um, caused by excess excessive cycling of the thermostat. These excessive thermocycles within the cooling system may cause the tubes to fatigue, crack, and leak at the radiator headers. Uh, to correct this condition, a new thermostat has been designed that elimits, eliminates the excessive cycling. Um, if the addition is found, in addition to replacing the radiator, the engine coolant thermostat housing with the thermostat must also replace. So actually the whole housing, uh, for some reason, also needs to be replaced with it. Um, so, if you have a 14 through 16 Silverado um, and you've never had this issue happen, um, it may happen to you at some point down the road, uh, but it seems like GM did correct this issue with the 17 and 18 model years. Now, one issue I forgot to cover when we initially recorded this video, so the audio here might sound a little different, my apologies, is the starter. Many of you commented that there was premature starter failure on your trucks well below 100,000 miles. And now while a starter is a almost a wear item on a vehicle and it's very common for them to go and need replacement. On a truck, you expect that to be a little bit beefier and to me, it should be lasting beyond 100,000 miles. Now, I haven't had to replace my starter, but there were a lot of you that commented that you did. Now, some of the issues related to the starter did seem to stem from grounding issues with corrosion occurring on the grounding straps and causing the starter not to function properly. So in some cases it was a bad starter and in other cases it was a grounding issue, but either way there was a lot of reported issues with the starter. All right, before moving on to the last few issues in the interior of the truck, 
I'm gonna talk about one more exterior problem and that is a rear end clunk. Now some of you commented that you had a rear end clunk and it ended up being your leaf springs. I also have a rear end clunk right now and it is extremely hard for me to diagnose it because it happens so intermittently. Um, normally it happens when I'm going very slow, um, often in turns and you'll just hear like a kind of thump, thump from the back um, for a few seconds and then it goes away as the vehicle uh, moves. Um, a lot of suspension issues that could be causing a clunk. So don't just assume that your leaf springs are causing this issue. You could have something more serious going on. But several of you did comment that you had a rear end clunk and you did isolate it to the leaf springs. Um, some of you did some greasing and some other things to, to fix that. Um, once I identify what this clunk is, there will definitely be a video coming out on it. Um, you know, whether it's my leaf springs or something else needing to be replaced on the truck. So stay tuned for that. And hopefully uh, if you guys have any suggestions about what that clunk might be or what you did to fix the clunk, if it was your leaf springs or something else, definitely leave that down in the description. Um, but that's all the exterior issues. Let's move on to the interior. All right, so in the vehicle and the first issue we're gonna talk about is the brake. So obviously an exterior component, but you do use your brake pedal inside the truck. Um, so. Thankfully, GM did issue a recall on this. Um, they've actually issued a few recalls on this. Um, so the first recall was in September of 2019. It affected all 2014 through 2018 trucks. Um, on September 6 of 2019, General Motors notified dealers they will need to resolve an issue with a vacuum brake assist pump that makes it more difficult to engage the braking system and increases the risk for a crash. The problem appears to stem from an excessive debris and sludge buildup on the vacuum pump filter screen that is actually bolted up to the block. There's actually uh, oil that runs through that. So as debris and stuff builds up over time, if you're not changing your oil enough, I'm sure this affects it. Um, so you'll have a hard brake pedal and increase the times to stop the truck. Um, truck and SUVs overdue for an oil change may be at higher risk. So GM's fix to this was recalibrating the computer component um, to uh, recognize that decrease in brake pressure from the vacuum punk. Um, then a class action lawsuit was filed in July 2020 by someone that didn't think their fix was sufficient. Um, and then GM expanded the recall in October of 2020 to an additional 15, 14.6 thousand trucks that they missed the first time somehow. Um, and then uh, GM engineers fixed this for the next generation, right? No. Uh, GM issued another recall in December of 2019 uh, for the 2019 trucks um, and an additional update recall in February of 2020 for those same 2019 trucks because the first recall might have caused additional problems. So um, GM is still working out this uh, issue with the brake pedal, it seems. Hopefully by now it's fixed. This is a couple years old. I haven't seen any new recalls since then, um, so hopefully they got that figured out. But definitely change your oil regularly. Don't go too long so that you're going to have debris clogging that up. Um, but yeah, um, they said that there's been 113 reported accidents um, from that uh, recall. I'm not sure if it was from the initial recall. I, I forget in my notes, but 113 accidents and then 13 non-fatal injuries. So um, I don't think anyone's died, fortunately, um, because it does seem to happen when the truck is moving somewhat slow. Um, from a lot of the reports that I heard. Um, so hopefully it doesn't happen at high speeds, but not a good thing to have your brakes go out. <laughs> While on the topic of safety, let's talk about your airbags. Um, in 2016, GM issued a side curtain airbag uh, recall because the airbag could accidentally deploy um, unexpectedly. Um, so according to NHTSA, the National Highway Traffic Safety Association, the roof rail airbag, otherwise known as the side uh, airbag right here, side impact airbag, um, may rupture or the end cap may detach from the inflator. This may result in an unexpected airbag deployment or sudden release of compressed gases, which may eject or propel the components into the passenger cabin. A failure of this type may be catastroph catastrophic and increase the risk of crash, injury, or death. Now, this appears to only have affected 2015 through 2016 Silverados. There were about 410,000 uh, involved in the recall. Um, and hopefully, if you have a 2015 or 2016 Silverado that was affected, um, you've already gotten this recall taken care of. If not, I highly recommend getting that done as soon as possible. If you're not sure if your vehicle was affected, you can always run your VIN or check with the dealer to see if there are any open recalls for your truck. Now we received a ton of complaints about the head unit, um, as well as some other features of the head unit. Now one of these issues I have experienced myself, and that is the sound cutting out regularly from Bluetooth. 
Um, so this usually happens for me anytime I switch apps. Um, sometimes also just pausing a YouTube uh, video or something like that and then restarting the video um, or a podcast or whatever will actually cut the sound. Um, and the only quick way I have found to reconnect that um, and get the sound working again is to go to my media options, disconnect the phone, and then reconnect the phone. It's really annoying. I've kind of just gotten used to doing it, but it is kind of frustrating. Um, a lot of you also reported that these lights, the, the, the blue and red LEDs here, burn out. I don't know if there's an easy way to fix that besides actually replacing the entire module right here. And then a lot of you guys also reported that the head unit would randomly freeze up, um, would also uh, kind of randomly uh, switch between applications or just flash back and forth. Um, so a lot of issues with this head unit apparently. I'm kind of lucky that the only thing I guess is my Bluetooth cutting out once in a while. Everything else has been okay with it. I also haven't been to the dealer a lot for updates on this. So maybe some of the new updates are causing more issues um, or maybe some of the new updates are fixing those issues. I'm not sure, but mine has been pretty good besides that sound cutting out. Um, but those are some of the other issues that you guys identified. And then if we move up right here to our sunglass holder, there are some screws in here that many of you complained about becoming loose over time and this actually falling down. Uh, there's a couple screws up in here. I believe there's four total. My truck has a low battery and doesn't like me right now. Um, there's four total screws, I believe. I'm seeing two right now because I haven't actually had this problem, but apparently the screws that are holding this module up to the roof rattle loose over time and this can fall down. So if that happens, just put the screws back in. Hopefully you didn't lose them. Maybe check those if you start to hear any rattles up here and you can prevent that from happening. Another issue is the window controls and door locks from the driver's side door stop working. Um, one of you uh, guys was kind enough to respond to my question about that and gave me a detailed answer that when they investigated it, they found that one of the wires that runs from the door to the cab of the truck through this rubber grommet right here is a little bit short and repeatedly opening and closing the door causes it to snap. So he just extended that wire a little bit, bridged that gap, hasn't had a problem since. This might be an issue on some of the other doors as well, um, but you're obviously gonna open and close your driver's side door the most, so it's gonna pop up here first. But before you go buying a new module, check those wires because that might be your problem. And one more issue while we're in the driver's side seat is the belt right here. This particular area of the belt can become fatigued as the driver moves in and out of the driver's side seat. Um, GM did issue a recall on this in 2016 for almost a million trucks and uh, it only affected the 14 and 15 year models. Um, basically the steel cable inside of here would become fatigued as it got bent back and forth over time. Um, I was involved in this recall um, and they told me to inspect this area to see if it had become cracked or shown any signs of fatigue. The plastic on mine is still in great shape, um, so I did not need to go in for the recall. However, definitely a good idea to check this area out, make sure it's in good shape. Even if you have a newer truck, um, always inspect your seatbelts. You wanna make sure that they're in good operating shape. Um, not really sure actually how you could slide in and hit it because for me, it kind of sits behind the seat, but if you had it up here, I suppose you you could kind of do that, but keep an eye on it. You want your seat belts to, to always be in good working order. All right, guys, so there's the additional 16 issues. Um, so 28 issues total, 12 a few weeks ago, plus these 16, and a few more bonus ones down in the description, so make sure to go check that out. As with our last video, we're gonna show videos down in the description with links to show you how to fix some of these problems. So make sure to go check that out. If you haven't checked out last week's, or the, the first part of the series with the 12 issues, make sure to go see that as well. Have we forgotten an issue that you experienced? Definitely let us know down in the comments. And thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate it. Wouldn't be here without you guys. And we'll see you in the next video.